The Baptist cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Awake and hearken, for he brings glad tidings of the King of Kings. Then cleansed be every soul from sin, make straight the way of God within. Prepare we in our hearts a home where such a mighty guest may come. For thou art our salvation, Lord, our refuge and our sure reward. Shine forth and let thy light restore our souls to heavenly grace once more. All praise, eternal Son, to thee, whose advent set thy people free, whom with the Father we adore, and Holy Spirit Good evening and welcome to St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Parish. Tonight we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. Before we begin Mass, please take a second to silence your cell phones, because we don't want those going off. And we also ask that everyone adhere to the health and safety guidelines to protect all of our parishioners. And this includes wearing your face mask properly over both your nose and your mouth, and keeping a safe distance from other parishioners online both to go to communion and also going out of the church. So make sure you maintain your six foot distance. Um, now please stand and join us in singing our opening hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Oh, uh -huh. 
Good day, everyone. We gather to this day to worship our God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at the end. Her guilt is expatiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low, the rough country a broad valley, then glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up into high mountain, Zion, herald a glad tidings, cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news, fear not, cry out and says the cities of Judah, here is our God. Here comes the power, the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gather his lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes in his care. The word of the Lord. Our response is, Lord, let us see your kindness. Lord, grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness. Lord, grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness. Lord, grant us your salvation. Now I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord who speaks of peace. Near to us now, God's saving love, for those who believe. Lord, let us see your kindness. Lord, grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness. Lord, grant us your 
salvation. Mercy and faithfulness shall meet in justice and peace embrace. Truth shall blossom from the earth as the heavens rejoice. Lord, let us see your kindness. Lord, grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness. Lord, grant us your salvation. God shall grant abundant gifts, the earth shall yield its fruit. Justice shall march before our God and, and guide us to peace. Lord, let us see your kindness. Lord, grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness. Lord, grant us your salvation. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a, with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of person ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you. A reading from the beginning of the Gospel of St. Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, 
proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. The people of Israel were not faithful to God, and as a result, God took them out of their land, and he brought them into slavery in Babylon. It was for 70 years that they were slaves in Babylon, 70 years that they could not worship God in their temple in Jerusalem, 70 years when they were treated as second-class citizens, 70 years when they thought that God had abandoned them. But as we hear from the words of the prophet Isaiah in our first reading today, from chapter 40 of Isaiah, we hear that God is going to bring his people back. But God is going to bring his people back in his way, not in their way. But what he wants the people to do is to prepare the way for him. In other words, make it easy for God's people to come back into the promised land make it easy for them once again to do what God wanted them to do. Now, that's me, that's the, the prophet used the idea of lowering the, the, the mount, mountains and raising the valleys so that there would be a, a highway for God. But what he was talking about really was taking away all the things that keep us from doing what God wants us to do. You see, it's really a question of this. It's not us that, want, that are going to manipulate God and how he wants to come into our life, but it is our responsibility to make situations available so that God can come more readily, not only into our life, but in the life of those around us. So it's a question of how we are being the ones who prepare the way. Now, obviously, the prophet Isaiah did a relatively good job. He was able to bring the people back they got back into Jerusalem, and they were there for, obviously, a long time. But obviously, the kind of preparation that those people did was not complete. We hear about a little bit of the completion of that preparation in our gospel story today. John the Baptist, you might say, was probably the last of the prophets. He was the one who basically pointed out to Jesus and said, here's the one who takes away the sins of the world. Here's the one who we're, we're waiting for. And so as we hear in our gospel today, the prophet Isaiah's words are basically fulfilled. He sends a messenger ahead of you to prepare your way, a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. That's exactly what John the Baptist did. He prepared the way. He baptized the people. He got them to ask for forgiveness for their sins. He was trying to make them a people ready to receive the Lord when he would come. And ultimately, that's exactly what he did. He pointed to Jesus and said, he's the one who was to come. He's the one who's going to take away the sins of the world. In our life, we are also charged, not necessarily saying to God, we want you to come into our life, but we have a responsibility to prepare the way so that God can come on his own terms. You might say it's almost like clearing a pathway. It's almost like clearing a landing strip for a plane. It's a way of helping God to come into our life and to make, him, make, him, make our lives ready to receive him. That's really what it's all about. And what better time than Advent as we are preparing for Christmas, but also preparing for Jesus to come again at the end of time. We are still charged with responsibility of preparing the way. Just as John the Baptist did, just as Isaiah did, we have that same responsibility, prepare the way of the Lord so we can come more readily and more fully into our lives in this world. Today, then, as we worship God, let us pray that we can follow the example of those prophets of old, and as, just as they prepared the way and made ready a landing place for our God, let us do the same thing in our day today.
Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, you give comfort and peace to your people. We come before you with the prayers of our hearts. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops and priests, that they will shepherd the church with wisdom and loving compassion, we pray to the Lord. For civil servants and government officials that they will provide to comfort those who seek assistance, we pray to the Lord. For all expectant parents anxious for a new child, or those who hold vigil with loved ones facing death, that they find peace after hope-filled waiting, we pray to the Lord. For members of our community, especially those who are unable to be with us this day, that we all faithfully await new heavens and a new earth, we pray to the Lord. For those who are ill and listed in our book of the sick, that they receive the healing power of Christ, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially Marty Barricada and Bishop Rodimer, that they have eternal life, we pray to the Lord. God of goodness and grace, may we heed Isaiah's message as we strive prayerfully to prepare the way of the Lord. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice of your hand, praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy truth. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and open for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Save us. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With the Spirit. Let us now offer each other a sign of peace. Jesus, Lamb of God, you 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
his love poured out his blood. Let us pray the Ignite Prayer. Heavenly Father, pour forth your Holy Spirit to inspire our parish community. Stir in our souls the desire to renew our faith and deepen our relationship with your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Ignite us that we might truly hear, believe, and live the good news. Grant us the confidence to proclaim your message to others. Strengthen us that we might go forth and witness to the gospel in our everyday lives. Sanctify our words and actions. God, our Father, we pray that through the Holy Spirit, we might begin to make all things new as we seek to transform our parish. We pray that we might renew our commitment to your mandate to minister to one another. We pray that we might be restored to the vitality of our baptism as we accept our mission to go out and witness to the saving grace of your Son, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with, with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Spirit one God, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, <clears throat> we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and to hold firm to the things of heaven. Christ our Lord. Please be seated. This coming Tuesday is a holy day of obligation, Feast of the Immaculate Conception. We'll be having Mass at 9 o'clock in the morning and also a Mass at 7 o'clock in the evening. I'd like to remind you to try to fill out the survey uh, for the Mass that you intend to come to on Christmas. As I mentioned last week, we have the flock note uh, uh, email, which you can respond to, or if you'd like, you can respond to the pages that are on the, in the back of the church. But we need, we'd like to get a, a kind of a close number of how many people we can expect for Mass on Christmas so that we don't over, overstock the church. Uh, ShopRite gift cards are available to order online. If you'd like to order them, please see our website or bulletin. As you know, Christmas giving is a little bit different this year. If you'd like to participate by giving a gift card, uh, you can do that um, by, the, uh, by the things that are in our bulletin. Then there is a toy drive going on this week and next week. If you'd like to bring any new toys, please just put them in the truck and they will be distributed to the needy children in the uh, area of Patterson. Have a good week, everyone. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. As we go forth, please sing, if you know the words, O come, divine Messiah. I know Father Stan knows the words.
the world in silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness be away. O Christ, whom nations sigh for, whom priest and prophet long foretold, come break the captive's fetters, redeem the long lost foe. Dispel the night and show your face And bid us hail the dawn of grace O oh, come divine Messiah The world in silence waits the day When hope shall sing its triumph And sadness flee away